Alright, we're down here doing our homework, watching videos. We've been binge watching this stuff. And pretty much, if you want to make a good game, you're going to have to become a freaking. have a doctorate. <laughs> on the Battle of Gettysburg. And that's what we intend on doing. Uh, like I said, homemade game, amateur historian. Well, we can see what we can do. There you go, it's been a long day, but we are doing our homework. Studying every aspect we can so we can get it right. We're back. Hello again. Uh, not too early morning this morning. I was up late, <laughs> slipped it on in. But we did have some uh, late night brainstorming sessions. And I'm going to give you a little bit look at our. Uh, I think we've come up with a final design for our counters. You know, let's just look at the little progression we've gone through from concept, art, to different ideas. This one here being a uh, one just shows you the infantry, and those uh, two lines look like they're captain's bars, uh, represent the unit in the column. There you go. We got one over here. Uh, there you go. These are uh, infantry in line. That's how we're di dictating line and column, and the movements and everything are going to be, I think, kind of standard, uh, but mostly based on road conditions. So. We won't have them on the counters. Here gives a little idea about uh, how we're going to use these counters. Uh, this will be your uh, cover counter. You'll put this on either your deception counter or your actual counter so they don't know what's up. Let us see this uh, infantry uh, counter on top. Now there's also, we have been discussing, the encampment portion. And here you go. Sense a little tent. That means that the unit is encamped. And we'll find out how to use that in the in the game. But there you go. You'll either have this is this is still. They're not doing anything up that day. They're just camped. We don't know if we're going to have night turns or anything like that too. But there you go. We'll be having this. And then another part of the game, and it's not really intentional, but it'll be a mechanic. Is how well you keep this cover counter. On top of your units. Now you'll be al allowed to take it off from a certain hex and go down and do whatever you got to do with it. But when it's on the board, it's open season. And these counters here are homemade, so they're not really stacking the way they should. But uh, yeah, if you move and let the enemy see <laughs> what you got underneath there, or by mistake, that's intelligence. So when you're moving these things around, part of the game's going to be your game board dexterity, and not letting this thing move. It's going to be part of the game. You, this thing comes off, you lose your intelligence, he gets to find out, if he's watching. So if you're playing the game, when it comes time to move your, your opponent to move, you definitely want to be watching these counters to see if he makes a mistake. And like I said, these things are homemade. They're not really stacking all that well. So there you go. Well, from concept, I think that's the way we're going to have our counters. Now, I've also come to, a, uh, not a conclusion, but initial thought about uh, combat. And that is going to have a big influence on our final counter uh, oh, illustration or counter design and I think I've come up with this right here there you go this will be the final design for our counters uh, that's Pettigrew's brigade see the X up there they're in line got the old confederate flag for a little bit of extra decorations but I think we're going to use the PIP system I always like that, and it's mostly used in block games, but I have seen it used on counters. So this counter here will have its, you know, Confederate uh, cover counter on it. But when it comes time to fight, you'll be removing them, and there'll be bonuses if you get if you engage a unit that's still in column. If they haven't gone into line, you'll definitely get modifiers on that. But here you go. So this unit here will be rolling four dice. You'll roll the number of dice compared to your pips. So it'll be rolling four, and you take the top two results. So the 5 and a 4 will be what he's going with. Say so you take a, your opponent can only roll 3 dice. You, you see what I'm getting at here. Alright, he got two fives. So this is the attacker's dice. This is the defender's. What's the result? The result is the attacker loses 2 because he always wins. Right here, so if you got a 4 pipper going against the 1. You know, it's, you only roll 1 dice if you only roll 1. If you roll 2 dice, you take the top 2. You, know, you see what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I think we'll use that kind of a uh, system. 
There you go. So you'll be moving this thing up according to how many pips you got left. I like that idea. Uh, let me see. Let me see my notes. It says roll dice according to strength. Four strength, four dice, three strength, three dice. Oh, top two results used. Tie favors the defenders. Unless you're down to one pip, then you use only one die. Some, oh, if not most Confederate counters will only have three pips. Because they are reduced strength from the previous day's combat. So Confederates are going to have a little bit of a handcuff there. But uh, the, the handcuffs will be according to each side. So that's the handcuff for the, it's one of the handcuffs for the rebels. A handcuff for the Union is it means indecisiveness, having to roll for their activation, uh, getting a minus two on a uh, recon roll, all kinds of stuff going on in my head. So we got things going on here. Another thing I want to make note of is uh, I want to put the pips according to their historic strength. We'll look that up. Uh, I want to have an extreme retreat option where you put ground between you and your attacker. To do that, you'll get an extra hex to retreat. That's if you're really getting your butt kicked. You want to, like I said, put some distance down there. But, of course, the extra retreat means you lose another strength point or another pip. So that's where we're at now. we got a lot of work we got to do. Did a lot of oh, outside yard work. we got a little bit more left to do today. It feels great to get out. It's kind of midwinter cabin fever. I mean, we have a great time down here, but it's always nice to get out and do some yard work. Just got a little bit to do yesterday. I might have overdid it. That's why. <laughs> no early morning brainstorming. Oh, oh, GWT's body's sore. I overdid it yesterday, but it, it's all in a good time. We're getting ready to go out and take the dog for its hourly walk. Uh, another thing I want to make note of is we did kind of design our little road box. Let me see if I can get this over here set up for you. There you go. Where's our road condition box? We might squeeze that up a little bit, give it a little more decorations. But we're going with that. And then after you roll for your road, road conditions, you'll put in the appropriate panel. This one here means the road's muddy. That's mud one. We got a mud two illustration. And we also got us a couple of these nice little, and this won't have anything to do with the game. We will have an option where you can have it be totally uh, ahistorical, or it's not historical at all. And you can roll for the weather. And if you're in the haste of historical mode, you might even get yourself a clear road. So there you go. But in historical road or historical mode, you know, I think the odds of getting any kind of clear weather are pretty well out of the picture because the whole uh, campaign and the retreat to the Potomac took place during some really torrential rains, as you can see in the pictures. But we'll have an optional game where you could go a historical, maybe speed the roads up a little bit. All right, that'll be it for right now. we got some stuff to do outside. just want to give you a little drop-in. Had a good time last night. We, we, we don't get to go to art with uh, broadcasts all the times. A lot of times I'll see that it's on, and I would have missed it or it would have been halfway going on through. Last night I was able to get in. They had a great discussion. And, uh, yeah, I like chatting away with everybody. So uh, we'll see you down the road. All right, just a little note I wanted to make about that extreme retreat result you have to roll for that option that doesn't come at automatic and uh even the pip loss will be according to your roll so you ain't gonna be automatically able each time to do that extreme res uh, retreat and like i said there'll be handcuffs for each side according to play balance you want to make it play balanced uh make, you know make it a pl playable game but that's about it we're having a great time down here hope you guys are too when we come back from our hour-long dog walk uh i'm sure we'll get back to war for america i that yard work i got is very brief i just i had to stop yesterday so when you come back we'll be back with some gilbert collins war for america